This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. The welterweight division is one of the most celebrated and historically rich weight classes in boxing history. There have been many outstanding welterweights over the years, and in my lifetime alone there have been some very high-profile megabouts in the division. Just a few examples, the early 1980s had the undisputed showdown between Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy the Hitman Hearns. The late 1990s had a battle of undefeated champions between Oscar De La Hoya and Felix Trinidad. And of course, more recently we had the long-awaited and long-overdue clash between Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Each of those three fights featured the two elite welterweights from those times. All of them were era-defining welterweight contests for the time under the big spotlight. Today we have a similar situation in the sense we have two elite welterweight champions who were standouts among the rest. Undeniably, the two best welterweights in the world today, Errol Spence Jr. and Terence Bud Crawford. A fight between those two has been brewing for years, but for various reasons it has not yet materialized. This needs to be remedied. A fight between Spence and Crawford would theoretically produce the first undisputed welterweight champion in the modern four belt era. And the fact that both of these champions have perfect undefeated records only adds to the intrigue. This would undoubtedly become the defining welterweight prize fight in this generation, meaning the biggest and most significant since the richest fight in boxing history seven long years ago. Their most recent victories make this inherently intriguing clash of styles all the more captivating. Last November, Crawford made the sixth defense of his WBO title against former WBC welterweight champion Sean Porter. Porter started the fight fast and was having some early success. But after a few rounds, Bud maintained his composure and began making adjustments. And he continued making subtle adjustments where his timing was steadily improving throughout. In round 10, Crawford bombarded Porter with a sweet left. Porter beat the count, but he was soon down again, which prompted his corner to stop the fight. It was a 10th round technical knockout for Crawford, and this was the only time Porter was ever stopped inside the distance, something Spence himself could not do when he won a decision against Porter in a unification bout back in September 2019. Last Saturday, Spence put his unified IBF WBC championship on the line against WBA Super Duper champion Jordanis Ugas. During the earlier rounds, Ugas was doing a pretty good job of blocking and deflecting incoming fire, but once Spence started getting a better feel and finding his groove, he really started rolling. Spence was landing all types of shots in pretty tight quarters, and his ample stamina enabled him to continue unloading a wide variety of punches and bunches both upstairs and down. Spence seemed to get better and stronger as the fight progressed, and Ugas wasn't doing himself many favors by standing right inside of Spence's optimal punching range. Things came to an end in round 10 when the ringside physician advised the referee to stop the fight because of damage suffered around the eye of Ugas. With the victory, Spence is now the unified IBF WBC WBA Super Duper Champion, and that is also six consecutive title defenses for him. Crawford looked tip-top in his last outing despite 12 months of inactivity leading into that one. And Spence looked as good as ever despite having his first fight in more than 16 months. Spence also showed no ill effects whatsoever that I could detect in terms of the serious car accident and the subsequent retinal tear which forced him to pull out of last year's scheduled bout with living legend Manny Pacquiao. While this matchup certainly could have and almost certainly should have happened sooner, right now, it is definitely not too late. These are two extremely talented, undefeated welterweight champions, and both of them are on nice winning streaks in terms of welterweight championship matches. 
The most interesting thing about this matchup for me goes beyond the already inherently intriguing clash of styles when you simply look at the way both of their most recent fights unfolded. They both got off to a methodical start the first few rounds, where despite having vastly different approaches, they patiently assess what the opponent is bringing to the table as they studiously begin to mentally dissect the foe in front of them. It took Crawford a little time before he started really setting in with his timing and distance, and it likewise took Spence a little time before he started establishing his groove, where he started effectively turning up the pressure and heat in consistent fashion. Spence is capable of doing some of the things that gave Crawford some difficulty, and the reverse is true too. Just looking at that one scary moment for Spence in round 6, which honestly was a bit of a confusing situation all around that almost reminded me of when Floyd knocked out Ortiz. Anyway, Spence admitted to making a rookie mistake, and he got tagged real good. Now again, this was a bit of a strange sequence, but the point here being, Ugas grabbed his attention with that shot, and while Ugas is a very sharp puncher, he's not known for being a true power puncher in the same mold as Bud. If Crawford is going to have any success against Spence, he's going to need to deter him with well-placed sharp counters that stop him in his tracks. The goal for Bud will be to prevent Spence from ever establishing that rhythm where he enters into full beast mode. Ugas had a bad habit of getting pounded while he stayed too close to Spence's ideal striking range. His fighting instincts were not particularly good at these points. And this is an area where Crawford excels. He has a tremendous ring IQ, terrific fighting instinct, and he usually knows where not to be every bit as much as he knows where he should be. For me, it's a true 50-50 pick'em fight if ever there was one. Spence never fought anyone like Crawford, and Crawford hasn't faced anyone like Spence. My suspicion is that these two welterweight champions will bring out the very best in one another, and that it should produce a highly engaging, crowd-pleasing encounter. But for that to happen, they need to fight, because it ain't never gonna matter more than it does right now. In my humble opinion, both of these guys have already made a strong mark in the sport, and I think they already proved themselves as great boxers in this era. But the thing of it is, they need to fight. And the winner of this fight would likely go on to be remembered as someone very special during the long, rich history of the welterweight division. In the early 1980s, fans were treated to the undisputed welterweight showdown between Sugar Ray Leonard and Tommy the Hitman Hearns. In the late 1990s, fans were treated to the welterweight unification bout between undefeated champions Felix Tito Trinidad and the golden boy Oscar De La Hoya. In 2015, at long last, fans were treated to the welterweight mega bout between Floyd Money Mayweather and Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao. Will this generation be treated to a welterweight showdown between undefeated champions, The Truth, Errol Spence Jr., and Terrence Bud Crawford, a fight that would, in theory, produce the first undisputed welterweight world champion during the modern four-belt era? Oof, maron. I sure freaking hope it happens. It's an important chapter in welterweight history, and a huge boxing match that really needs to take place in the very near future. Here's to hoping. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner.